Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Hub City Drones. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Remember, hit that like, subscribe, and that notification button down there so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos, especially the one we have coming out in a few weeks called Paul's Picks, where I'm gonna show you my favorite uh, picks for Christmas 2021. We'll have some drones in there, some RC cars, toys, other gadgets like that. Hopefully save you some money and make your Christmas shopping a little bit easier this year. So today we're going to look at Holy Stone's newest drone. It's their HS440. It's kind of a mid-sized drone. It's not really a mini. It's not really a full-size drone. It actually looks like a miniature-sized version of their HS720E minus the high-tech features of the 720E. We're going to unbox it. I'll show you everything that it comes with, show you how to set it up. Really easy to do. Then we're going to put this little dude in the air and we're going to see just how it can handle. Great part, Amazon $99.99 right now. They do have a limited time 10% off clickable coupon. And thanks to Holy Stone, they gave me an additional 10% off coupon to give to you guys. It's right down there in the description. So go grab it. Go get yourself a drone. You'll have it in a couple days. Great little backyard indoor drone right here, guys. Let's go check it out. Okay guys, here we go. We're going to unbox the Holy Stone HS440, or as I like to call it, the 720 Mini Me, kind of, but I'll show you in a minute. Alright, so let's get this bad little dude out of his box here. Oh, what do we got? Ta-da! Don't need that. Very nice case. It's a cloth covered case if you can't tell from the video. It's got a pretty decent handle on it. Holy Stone logo. Dual zippers. Awesome. Here we go. Ta so let's take all the stuff out of the lid first. Let's see. I'm going to show you everything we get with it, and then I'll go over everything for you. So if you want not to see that part, you can fast forward through it to the test flight or whatever you need to do. So, see, we get a spare set of blades with a screwdriver. The instruction manual. With your caution of use battery statement in there. I know I always say it, you guys, but read your manual top to bottom. Don't just take the drone out of the box, put it up in the air, and fly it and try to figure it out on your own. It's not safe. So live it, learn it, know it. Quick tip, Google Holy Stone HS440 downloadable PDF manual, and then you can have it on your phone or print it out, and you can read the entire manual before your drone even gets delivered to your front door. All right, and we got a bright orange card in here. What is this for? Telling you not to charge your batteries in the case, so you don't want to do that. I'm not sure how you would do it, but they tell you not to do it, so don't do it. And then you get two USB cables to charge your batteries, and it does look like you have to use the cable, that particular cable anyway, that comes with it. Now, for the good stuff, one foam padding, then we have two, count them, two. 1900 MHA high powered mini drone engines. I will take them out of the wrapper so you can see them a little better. One up, one down. There we go. How's that? <laughs> then one remote control. And the star of the show one HS 440 drone in the case that's everything you get with it i'm going to move the case out of the way and we will get into the nitty-gritty here real quick so let's see why don't we start with the usb chargers you do get two of them and all you need is a five volt charger box one from your cell phone will work just fine uh, just make sure it's not over a five volt two amp or you could risk uh explosion of the batteries or or you know something like that they can melt or you'll 
kill a couple cells and you won't get your full charge out of them. So the batteries, you do get two of them, which is awesome. They are, you get 20 minutes of battery, it takes 180 minutes for each battery to charge. So that's three hours if you don't want to do the math. They are 1900 mAh, 3.8 volt batteries. Sorry, I think I said 3.7 before. They are LiPo batteries. Very cool. Then we have our remote control. It's a 2.4 gigahertz controller. There are no antennas on the top. Your cell phone holder. This will hold, I believe it's a 4.1 inch to a... Uh, Oh man, I knew I was going to forget this. Ay, ay, ay. It's like a four and a half inch to a six and a half inch cell phone. I have the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and mine fits in here just perfect without my OtterBox case on it. But you just stretch it to the size you need. It's really cool. It does have like two different angles you can adjust it to. So that's cool. If there's a lot of sun, you can point it up back toward you or down. Pretty cool. Then, of course, you have your joysticks. Your left joystick is your ascend and descend, and your turn left, turn right. Your right joystick is your forward, backwards, or all left and all right. Now, when you turn the remote on for the first time, oh, look, we have batteries in it. I'm kidding. It does take three AAA batteries. They just slide right here in the back, like so, and then you just pop this back on there, like so. The controller always defaults to mode 2. And the only difference between mode 1 and mode 2 are the joysticks. All it does is swaps the joysticks around. So when you go to turn the controller on, just hold the trim button here. And you just hold it in while you turn the controller on. And it will default to mode 1. That will make this forward, back, backward, sorry. All left, all right. And this will make your ascend, descend, turn left, turn right. All it does is swaps the joysticks around. So you saw the power button in the middle. You have your three LED lights here. I'm not sure if they go out as your batteries start to go bad. I'm not thinking they would, but they may. You never know. So in the middle, you have your power or speed switch right here. So you have speed one. Click it over. You heard it beep twice. Now you're in speed two. Back over. You're in speed one. Then you have up here is your camera and video button. One click takes a picture, long press it. Now it's starting to take a video, tap it again, it will stop. Over here is your tricks button. I guess you could call it your trick button. Uh, one press, the drone will spin around really fast in a circle and then long press it and the drone will do what they call a circle fly. So it's not an exact circle fly because it's not GPS, but it will, it's a pretty decent radius. You could stand in the middle of it and have the drone go around you. It makes a pretty cool video. Tap it again or your joystick and that will stop. Now each one of these lasts 10 seconds or you can stop it on your own by just uh, hitting the joystick there and it will quit. So here is your auto takeoff and land button when you unlock the motors. You push this button and the drone will launch up into the air and keep going until you hit... No, I'm kidding. Push this button, the drone actually goes up nice and smoothly and it only goes up about four, four and a half, five feet and it will just stay there and it will wait for you to do what you want to do. You do have to trim the drone uh, so it's not going to go up and just hover in place like a GPS drone, not even close. And the trim is real simple. That's this button here. This is your headless mode and your trim button here. So you press it in and you hold it in and you'll see these will be blinking and then whatever way the drone is drifting, if it's drifting left, you tap it this way. If it's drifting right, you tap it that way. And if it's drifting, you know, vice versa backwards, you would tap it forward. Just tap this joystick in the opposite direction that the drone is drifting and keep doing it till it brings itself back or it stops and levels out and that's it. You're pretty much good to go. Again, your headless mode button is on here as well. So I'm going to turn it off real quick and show you this on the top and I will show you how it works here in just a minute. This part here actually blew my mind on this drone. This is a little wheel and it is functional and what this does is adjust your camera 90 degrees up and down while the drone is in flight. I have not seen one of these on a smaller, say, non-GPS drone so that's really, really cool. I was really impressed when I saw this wheel on here and that it actually works. 
Uh, it does move the camera kind of quickly, so it's just something you'd have to tap and get used to, but you know what they say, practice makes perfect. Let's go ahead and open up the HS440. All right, so you do have to open the back propellers first, or back arms first, or they will block each other. And then just the opposite, when you go to close it, close the back ones first, and then open the front one second. Or no, reverse that, strike that. That's not what I said, was it? Close the front ones first, and then the back ones when you're closing it up. When you're opening it up, open the back ones first, then the front ones. I think I had that right, right? Yeah, see, it'll... <laughs> Woo, that's a lot. All right, anyway, that is the HS440 right there. This little bad boy right here weighs 5.9 ounces or 166 grams. The range on this little guy here is 330 feet. That's the drone range and your FPV range. So your video feed is 330 feet as well. And that is up, down, side to side, back and forth, 330 feet all around. So you have your batteries, really cool. They just slide in the back like so. If you do them right, I did mine backwards, that figures. And you just pop it in there and they lock in. And be careful when you're popping it in, you don't want to push on this camera and break it. I usually try to just hold it next to it. And that's it, they lock in. And there you have your HS440 with battery in it. Now I'm going to show you something really quick and then we'll get into some more details on what this little guy offers. You've heard me call it a Mini-Me, and I'm going to show you why I call it a Mini-Me. HS440, HS720E. Look at this, you guys. This drone looks, minus the brushless motors and GPS and all that other good stuff, it literally looks like a Mini-Me. The camera on the fronts almost look the same. It's just so cool. It blew my mind when I saw that. The batteries, almost the same way. Let me pop the battery out of my 720 and I'll show you. And look, look, already you can see it. They just look like a miniature version of the battery. It's just so cool. So, so cool. Anyway, I thought that was really cool that it, it looked almost like the 720 or the 720E. This is the 720E, but anyway, we'll get that out of the way. So back to the drone. So it does have hinged propellers, which is really cool. They are semi-transparent, uh, pretty neat there. You do have your camera on the front. Remember I said it is 90 degree adjustable from the controller. The camera is at 1080p. Uh, there is a little uh, catch to that 1080p though. If you don't have the SD card in the drone, which goes right here and it will hold up to a 32 gigabyte SD card, and it just, I hope you can see it, but it slides right into the back here. That's it. It's in there. Without the SD card, you can still take video and photos, but only your photos will be stored at 1080p. Your videos will be stored in the album on the app and on the album in your phone at 720p. So if you want 1080p crystal clear, high definition pictures, you're going to need that SD card. So there's the camera. That's pretty much it. You have a couple filters on the bottom here. You have your serial number over here on the side. On the bottom is your power button. And you just long press it. And the drone comes on. And then you just gotta sync your controller to it. And to do that, you just turn the controller on. Long press the power button. And then up and back on the left joystick. And now you can see here, the light has quit blinking. We are synced. So the next step would be to calibrate the gyro. This does not have a compass calibration, so you don't need to turn it around or like this. You just need to calibrate the gyro so it kind of has a general idea of its altitude hold and all that other good stuff like that. But simple to do. Take both joysticks and you push them down and to the right. And hopefully you saw that. If not, trust me, it blinks four or five times real quick and then stops. Now this little dude is ready to fire up. And to unlock the motors, which is really cool on this one, you don't have to just push the joystick up for them to take off. You can unlock the motors, and I love that feature on a drone. Kind of gets that warm-up period for you. And it's just the same way, down and in this time with both joysticks. And here we go. I want to make sure I'm clear of the propellers. There it goes. Oh my god, it's so cool. Now... It makes some noise, but I have to be honest with you, this is a super quiet, non 
uh, or a brushed motor drone. Brushless motor drones are usually really quiet. This is almost similar. It's pretty damn quiet for having brushed motors in it. That surprised me. But to stop the motors, and again, that's it. They stop. You're good to go. That is our HS440 with everything you get with it. I went over the, uh, the cords, all that other good stuff. So now I'm going to show you how the app works, and I'll show you how to hook it up to the Wi-Fi. Okay, guys, so I'm just going to show you a pop-up screen here of how to connect the HS440 to the Wi-Fi or connect your phone to the drone's Wi-Fi signal. It's really simple to do. Just go to your Wi-Fi settings, open it up, and the drone will emit a, a Wi-Fi name. It's Holystone FPV, and then there's some numbers after it. All you want to do is simply connect to it. It'll tell you you're connected, and more than likely it's going to tell you you're connected without internet. That's perfectly okay. You do not need an internet connection to connect to the drone's Wi-Fi signal. So even if you have a, a phone without a cellular provider, if it works and it can connect to a Wi-Fi signal, you're good to go. If your phone asks you if you want to switch to cellular data or keep the Wi-Fi connection, keep the Wi-Fi connection because you can't fly it without that. Okay, guys, now that we're connected to the Wi-Fi, let's go ahead and enter the app. Voila. And if you have a video feed, you are connected correctly to the drone's Wi-Fi. You can see there we are. Very good. Now, you cannot use the controller and the app controls at the same time. And some of the features on the app, we just lost our feed, but some of the features on the app you cannot use if you have the controller on. So if you want to use the app's features, I know it sounds confusing, but you have to turn the controller off. You can unlock the motors with the control with the app or the controller, or you can do it with the controller, put the drone in the air, and then turn the controller off once you get it trimmed and take over with the app. But to get the app controls up, you have to hit that little remote control icon up at the top left up there. You'll see there it turned blue. Now your joysticks are up, and they're the same as the controller that you have it in your hand. The left one is ascend and descend, and the right one is forward and backwards. So the first little thing there on the top left that just turned blue is your headless mode. Then you have your speed switch that will switch it from speed 1 to 2. Your next one is your calibration for your drone. Tap it, it will do your gyro calibration for you on the drone. All the way over to the right now, the cell phone picture there, if you tap on this, that will make your phone basically a gravity sensor to control the drone. It will not make the drone go up or down or turn left or right, but it will, if you tilt your phone forward, your drone will go forward, tilt it back, the drone will go backwards, tilt it to the left, the right, so on and so on, but it does not ascend and descend. You have to do that with your fingers still. Next one is your emergency stop button, and you'll see here when we tap it, you'll get a little countdown. Once that's done and gone, your drone drops out of the sky, so watch where it is. Your next one is your photo button. Then you have your VR. If you tap that, you can see the screen gets narrower, so you can put your VR goggles on and fly the drone, which is really super cool. Then those little boxes up there at the far right. Those are your other features the drone can do. So your first one is your talk, and you can say fly, you can say land, you can see it popping up on the screen there, land, backward. So as long as the app's recognizing what you're saying, the drone will do what you're telling it to do. You can fly, land, backward, forward, left and right is what you can do. You cannot unlock the motors or any of the other good stuff, but those are the commands you can do with your voice. The next one to it is your tap to fly. And you'll notice your right controller joystick on the app went away. And all you want to do is draw a pattern and make sure you have the room to do this. You can draw any pattern you want. I will do a figure eight just to show you. Whoops, I didn't. Oh, hold on. I didn't finish it. All right. And the drone will follow the pattern you drew right there on the screen. When it's done, it will stop. Just note, it's not GPS, so it ain't going to stop on a dime. It may continue to drift a little bit. Turn that one off so we have controllers are back. The next one is your trim. You can see the little sliders in the middle of the joysticks and at the bottom. The one in the middle is forward and backward trim. The one on the bottom is your left and right trim. So you can even trim the drone through the app. 
The next one with the one and two, you can see the two is highlighted blue already. That's the joysticks. Like I told you before, the controller defaults to mode two, how to switch it to mode one. On here, you can do the same thing. You just tap this and it swaps the joysticks around. So your left one is forward and backwards and your right one is ascend and descend. Back to two. Then you have your gesture. It pops up here. I'll let you see that. So a P sign, it will take your photo and a high five, it will start a video. Just remember you can't take a picture if you're recording a video or it won't, you can't do both. So you'll have to stop your video if you're recording in order to do this. We'll cancel that. The very bottom left is your auto takeoff and your auto land. So once you take off, the arrow pointing upward will be blue. When you hit the auto land, when the drone is in flight, the bottom one will turn blue and it will land where it is. It's not a return to home. So just note, it will land wherever you have it at. So all the way over to the right again, the camera is to take a picture. I'm not connected, so I won't do it. And then of course your video will start your video. And then down below is your photo album where your pictures are stored. They are stored to the SD card, remember in 1080p video. To your phone, it's 720p and there's a gallery in the app where it is also saved at 720p. That's the app. I showed you how to connect it to the Wi-Fi. We're good to go. We're gonna go get this thing ready and we're gonna put it in the air and we're gonna see what this little dude can do. But I wanna get it up in the air and show you how it sounds and how good it flies. So I'm gonna unlock the motors. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the one key takeoff button and up we will go and I'll show you how high up it launches and, and that's going to be it. Here we go. There we go. That's the height it goes up to. That was a really smooth takeoff. Nice takeoff. All right, so I'm drifting a little. The breeze could be affecting that. Now, if you're trying to trim this drone outside in any breeze whatsoever, you won't be able to do it. It's going to be impossible to do. But I'm going to try to set the trim a little bit and we'll see what we can do here. So let's see. So now the drone's drifting forward. And you can see there, that's pretty good, honestly. So that's not bad. You can see the drift is really slow. It gives you plenty of time to do what you got to do with him. I'm really impressed at how quiet this drone is for having brushed motors. That's just absolutely impressing me right now. That's crazy. All right, so I'm gonna do the speeds and I'll all in back and forth here and I'll show you the different speeds. Right now we're on speed one. And this is speed one. Now you can see when you let go of the joystick, this drone will keep drifting, but he'll slow down, but he's not gonna stop on a dime because it's not a GPS drone again. Then I'll slide the speed switch over. Now we're in speed two and I'll start on him in speed two so you can see it. Here we go. Whoa, speed two is really quick. Wow, really impressive. There is no delay whatsoever from the controller to the drone. That is really awesome. So I'll show you this, this real quick circle spin that he does here. So you can see that. You can see I've trimmed him and he's still drifting around, but that's the breeze. So just take warning, it's not a wind-loving drone for sure. All right, so let me see if I can get him fixed here just a little bit better than that. He's gonna, he wants to go outside with the wind. We'll get him in here a little bit better. That's pretty good. Get him over here, and now I'll do the quick circle spin. There he goes. Almost took my cameraman out. <laughs> All right, so he does do a circle fly. It's not a pretty circle fly, but he does it. 
it's not a big radius at all and i'll go ahead and do that now so you guys can see it let me get them out here some more because with my luck it'll be a bigger circle fly this time than what i did last time so here we go and that's the circle fly so just cool just to play around with him absolutely though this is a great backyard or indoor drone i love it not exactly a 720e stem cell drone but it's close it looks like it it's pretty cool hit the wire on the garage door opener there but he kept going so we're good all right so let's try the land button and see how well he lands and then I'll take off with the joystick and show you that, and then I'll show you guys the camera. So I'm gonna hit the land button. Wow. Wow, that was a really smooth landing. I've had other drones like this where they just plop down on the ground. All right, so I'll unlock the motors again. And now I'm gonna lift him up with the joystick. And that's it. I pushed up, let go, and that's how he goes. That's the drift. So not intimidating at all. I like, this is a badass little drone. I like this little drone, this is cool. All right, so I'm gonna hit record on my phone here so I can show you guys the video quality and then I'm gonna show you how the uh, adjustable camera works from the controller and the drone. It's not a great camera, but you can adjust it down and get bird's eye view and stuff like that, but it's definitely not one to take pretty videos with. So let me hit the video button. There we go. And you can see the video is pretty damn nice. For 1080p, it's not bad. And then here's the, gim the camera. I almost call it a gimbal. It's not quite a gimbal. So you can see there is a delay in it. And it moves rather quick. But look at that video. It's really nice. Very, very cool. And that's him. He's just staying there. He, it's a great altitude hold on it. I am really impressed. This is a really great little drone. Okay, so now I'll land him with the joystick and then I'm going to attempt to do something that I do not want to do. But I'm going to turn the controller off because you cannot have it on when you use the controllers on the app. I will turn the voice control on and I'm going to tell him to fly and we'll see if he'll take off. And that's probably as far as I'm going to get because I am not good at using the joysticks on the app at all. It takes a lot of practice and I just don't ever use them. So I'll land him with my joystick and we'll see how that goes. So here we go. Wow, nice smooth landing. As he plops down on the ground. So the one key land actually works a little bit better than the joystick. But again, that wasn't bad for this kind of drone. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to turn the controller off. <laughs> oh boy. You can see the controller on the app screen turned white. I'm going to click it. It'll turn blue. Now I have joysticks down here and I will have to unlock the motors with those. So when I unlock them, I'm going to tell the drone to fly and I pray to God it does not crash. Because again, I am not good at this whatsoever. So we're going to unlock the motors. Oh God, there they go. All right, here we go. Fly. Oh, I guess I got to... <laughs> hold on, I guess I got to turn the voice controls on, so let's do that. All right, here we go. All right, here it goes. Fly. Oh. So that's the controllers I'm doing now on the app. So they're pretty decent, but there is a little delay in them, and I am just not good at this. Land. Oh, well, that was quick. <laughs> all right, so we landed it. I'm not going to go through them all, guys. I just don't have the room to do it in here, so I don't want to do it. So I'll close these out. You can turn it off, turn your controller back on, and then joystick up and back. And now the drone is connected back to the controller. I really kind of wish that 
the controller and the app would work as one, you know, where you could do have both just in case of an emergency, you could grab the joysticks at least on the controller and save the drone. That was pretty close. We I almost wrecked it. All right, so we'll unlock the motors. I'll put them in the air one more time and take them for a little spin and show you guys a little more how he handles. And then I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this little badass. Here we go. One key takeoff. Awesome. I like him. Very cool. Very cool little drone. Handles super well. Easy to fly. Okay, so my final thoughts on the HS440. This really is a great little foldable drone. Uh, again, like I said earlier, not a mini. It's kind of a mid-size. Shocking how close to the HS720E it looks. They took a shrink ray and shrunk it down, minus the GPS and all the other good stuff on the 720E. But overall, I would absolutely give this drone five stars. I love the fact that you can put an SD card in it and that the camera is adjustable up and down. You guys saw it. It went well minus the trying to do the app controls, but again, I'm not great at doing that. So, but we opened them, it flew, it worked. Love the way it handles, no, um, uh, no lag between the controller, no delay between the controller and the drone, which was great. It was an instant, even on the app, it was pretty much not much of a delay, it's slight, but not mad. So yeah, great little drone overall, I love it. Uh, probably will be in Paul's picks this year. So go to Amazon, get yourself one, guys. Remember, 99 bucks right around there. Use that 10% clickable coupon that Amazon has. Grab the coupon code I have down there in the description. Get an additional 10% off. Great drone for 80 bucks. Absolutely worth that price. That's going to do it. Great five star drone from uh, Holy Stone. Thanks again to them for the coupon code. So Go get yourself a drone, go fly it, have fun, don't be a drone dummy, and we'll see you guys next time.